realagriculture.com presents farming forward sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping nitrogen management and advanced grazing brought to you by the farm resilience mentorship program Hello, uh, my name is Steve Kenyon. I'm with uh, Greener Pastures Ranching. Uh, we operate a custom grazing business uh, near Busby, Alberta. Let's start with the grass principles. You were instrumental in the creation of them. Let's talk about uh, how they really do apply to a, a lot of the advanced grazing that we're talking about here in Canada. Okay, yes. Uh, grass principles, it was kind of an acronym we came up with uh, for the advanced grazing system uh, with the CFGA, uh, Canadian Forage and Grassland Association. So uh, basically G-R-A-S-S. -S. The G stands for the graze period, R is for the rest period, uh, A is for animal impact, uh, and stock density and soil armor. Okay, so I'll, I'll break them down now and kind of explain what each one is. So the graze period is really important uh, because it's the amount of time that the animals are on a paddock. Okay? That's, if our graze period's too long, we end up getting a second bite. Uh, we don't want the animals to be out there for an extended amount of time where the plants have a chance to regrow and then for the animals to graze that regrowth. Okay? Um, rest period is, is uh, the amount of time in between grazing. So if we have, let's say we have two grazings in a season, what's the time in between them? That's also important to stop that second bite. But in this case, we want to have that rest period long enough to make sure that the plants have fully recovered so that uh, the, the root reserves and all the energy stores in the plant have been fully replenished before we graze it again. So graze period and rest period kind of work like a, you know, taking a hay cutting. You want to let it grow, cut it in a short period of time, and then obviously ha harvest it off, and then allow it to regrow fully before you're going to harvest it again. So that's what we're trying to do with our pastures. We want a short graze period, a long enough rest period for full recovery, um, and that's going to help keep those pastures healthy. All right, so that's that graze period and rest period kind of work together. Uh, third principle is animal impact. Now, there's a couple of parts to animal impact. One is the physical animal impact, and the other is the biological animal impact. Uh, physical, that's the, the hoof action on the soil. Okay, that, that animal impact, that hoof action can actually break cap soil. It can push the forage down to cause, uh, you know, get, get uh, soil contact to help it uh, recycle. It can cause uh, uh, seed to soil contact, right? That hoof impact can, can create new seedlings to develop. Okay, so that's very important in, in keeping a, a pasture uh, to regenerate. Right? We want to have them, uh, you know, new seedlings to start up and, 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 and the next generation to come underneath, right? Um, the biological animal impact is very important. For years, I was unaware of that. I didn't really realize that was happening. Uh, but it is the uh, biology that the herbivore brings to the system. Okay, the herbivore is actually a keystone species in a grassland environment, right? We need them. Um, they help build the ecosystem. Uh, just as a quick way to, to, to show that, uh, a dung pad, so the, the manure pad out of a cow, it's home to over 450 different species of critters, right? That's home. Without a dung pad, there's 450 species that are not, not in your ecosystem, right? They're, they just bring in biodiversity. Um, that, cow, that cow patty is so important. Okay, so they have uh, biology coming out the back of the cow, right? We've got the manure and the urine. There's biology and or food for biology in that that's adding to the system. The biology of the herbivore has a symbiotic relationship with the biology in the soil, right? They work together. And, and it's not just the manure and urine. We also have phlegm and we have saliva. And we even have biology that falls off the hair coat that helps build an ecosystem in the soil, okay? Or feeding that ecosystem in the soil. So that, that biological animal impact is also really important. Okay, number four is uh, stock density. Stock density is really important for managing the soil. We need to get stock density high enough uh, to create two benefits. Uh, number one is we get an even plant utilization. Right? When the cattle come out here, we want to knock this thing flat. Uh, we don't want them to pick and choose. We want them to either eat or step on every blade of grass out here. So the higher the stock density, the better the plant utilization. Again, picture that hay field. Right? You come across it, you cut everything. Every plant has the same advantage to regrow. 
in a low stock density, so the lowest being continuous grazing, the cattle come out here and they pick and choose. They eat all the best plants, right? And then the, when those best plants start to regrow, they eat those ones again. So all your best plants get hammered over and over and over, and all your undesirables get to mature and, and reproduce and set seed. So which plant has the advantage, right? The undesirables. So that's why we end up with pastures full of weeds. So if we get our stock density high enough, we get that even plant utilization, uh, we don't end up having that issue. Okay, the other part uh, to get, getting that higher stock density is more even manure distribution. Well, when I say manure, it also means the urine, right? We're spreading nutrients more evenly. Um, in a continuously grazed system, it might take 20 or 30 years to get you know, manure distributed to you know, all over the pasture. Um, in a continuous grazing, most of the manure in urine ends up by the water or by the trees or in, in isolated spots, right? We don't spread that very good. The higher the stock density, the better they spread their manure in urine, right? It gets all over the place. Um, when you do a very, very high stock density, it's kind of uh, funny because you can't wear your town shoes out here, right? When you're extreme stock densities, there's manure everywhere and you, you, you got to be careful where you step. Okay? Um, I used an uh, analogy a few years ago. Um, when the dung pad hits the fan, your stock density is high enough. Because what, what I was doing was driving across the field with my quad. And I was getting manures flying up and my mechanics were uh, uh, upset with me a little bit because they were cleaning manure out of my radiator. Right? But, you know, I'm driving across the pasture and I can't avoid the manure. It's flying up, it's getting in my hair and I'm not, I can't dodge the cow patties because there's so many. So when the dung pad hits the fan, that's a good thing. You've got enough stock density. Um, most farmers can drive across their pasture all day long and never even hit a cow patty because the stock density is too low. Okay, last one is the uh, building a soil armor. That is the protective layer on the you know, soil surface that helps all the internal processes work. Kind of like the skin on your body, right? It, it's, it's the protective layer. Uh, we need that soil armor for numerous things. Uh, one is for the help building the water cycle. So we're leaving residue, we're trying to build that thatch layer. Uh, that helps to reduce runoff. So when we get the rain, it absorbs in. It also helps to stop evaporation. So once we get that moisture in the soil, it's not going to be evaporating. And it also controls temperature. Uh, we're trying to manage the biology in the soil. And if the temperature's swinging, you know, hot to cold, you know, night versus daytime, um, that's not conducive for the biology in the soil. So we want to keep that soil temperature uh, balanced, keep it more regulated. So that soil armor is so important for that as well. So that's the, the, the short version of the grazing uh, uh, grass principles. Uh, again, graze period, rest period, animal impact, stock density, and soil armor. But by the sounds of it, there's a huge integration between all five of the letters. So you do two of the five, you're, you're, you're miss, you're, it's a miss. Yeah. Three of the five, it's a miss. It really takes all five of them together, interchangeable, interlocked, that really provide that high output. Yeah, those are the basics. I mean, that's what a hay field is. It only does two, right? It does a good graze period and a good rest period. It's missing the rest of them. And that's why your hay field, you know, you got to reseed it in 10 years because it's done. Um, what we're trying to do is make this, you know, sustainable for generations. Um, this has been seeded down, you know, for longer than 20 years because I took it over, it was seeded down. Um, I'm, I don't ever plan on ripping it up, ever. I mean, it, it gets better. I mean, we have dry years and wet years, but um, I have no reason to rip up any of this land because it keeps getting better. And uh, that's the whole idea is to make this sustainable for generations. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, I encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.